We are continuing with What is Saving Faith by Gordon Clark. In this video, we are going to discuss a false teaching that has corrupted the Bible's simple definition of the word faith. The false teaching is known as modernism. Modernism is a form of philosophical sophistry that plays word games. It plays word games that mix up the philosophies of metaphysics and epistemology. Now, this sounds pretty complicated, but really it's very simple. Uh, this is a hamburger. I told you it was going to be simple. And, uh, but this, oh, this, on the other hand, is a declarative statement. This hamburger, uh, th oh, th this hamburger was made with Laura's Lane beef. This one is a real hamburger, but this one is a true statement. Uh, about the hamburger. I did indeed make this hamburger with Laura's lean beef. This one is real and this one is true, but this one is true. So reality, truth. Uh, this one is in the realm of reality. It, I eat it and it gives me nutrients. Uh, but this one is in the realm of thought. I think it and it gives me knowledge. So in philosophy, epistemology is the major field that studies what is true. And metaphysics is the major field <clears throat> that studies what is real. And there's four major fields. The other two are ethics and logic. Ethics is the study of imperatives. Uh, ethics studies what is morally right or what ought one do. Christian ethics specifically are based on those imperative commands found in the law of God and are, summar and are summarized in the Ten Commandments. And finally, logic is the study of drawing valid conclusions and making connections from, from declarative statements. Logic is closely related to epistemology because you can only draw logical implications from declarative statements that assert truth. <laughs> Such as, you know, uh, this hamburger was made with Laura's lean beef. <laughs> um, so we have epistemology, metaphysics, ethics, and logic. And people always get these three mixed up, you know, even the words we use can be ambiguous, like the word right can be morally right or it can mean correct or true. So, uh, you know, and the sophists have a field day anytime there's an ambiguity that they can uh, mix things up with. Indeed, the heresy of legalism is the illogical mixing up of what is morally right with what is true. Legalism is the category error that mixes up ethics and epistemology. And uh, theological heresy of modernism is the mixing up of what is real with what is true. So modernism is the category error, modernism the category error, error that mixes up metaphysics with epistemology. You know, but before we get into discussing metaphysics, I mean, discussing the modernist error, the modernism error, we need to review some of the things that we previously talked about in previous videos in light of this big picture uh, to give us some context and perspective. Now, you might have noticed that the root word, the root of the word epistemology is the word pistis. And pistis is the Greek word uh, in the Bible that we translate as faith. And biblically defining the meaning of the word faith has, of course, been the topic of this video series and is the subject of Clark's book, What is Saving Faith? Uh, so you may not have known it, but as we have been defining the word pistis, we have been studying epistemology. And uh, now, as you, you might recall from the second video, the object of pistis, the object of believing, is always a declarative statement that asserts truth. The mundane sentence, the hamburger was made with Laura's lean beef, is a declarative statement that asserts truth. But also, God's paramount promise to Abraham, I will make you the father of many nations, is likewise a declarative statement that asserts truth. A promise of God 
is a declarative statement asserting truth. In grammar, we would say that it is in the indicative mood because it indicates that something is true. So a promise about the future is in the indicative mood because it is a statement asserting truth. But also news about the past is in the indicative mood. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, is a declarative statement that asserts truth. The statement, Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sins, is in the indicative mood because it indicates that something is true. And from such declarative, indicative statements of truth uh, found in the Bible, we can draw logical implications and build belief systems. And it's only from declarative, indicative statements that we can logically infer a system of thought. And only declarative, indicative statements can logically be the object of faith. Now, as you may remember from the second video, we also talked a little bit about what is not, what cannot be the object of believing. For example, a command in the imperative mood logically cannot be the object of believing. That's mixing up your ethics and your epistemology. I cannot believe the imperative command, go get me a hamburger. You, would, you wouldn't see on a true or false exam Go get me a hamburger, true or false. That's just irrational. Furthermore, we cannot draw logical implications to build a belief system from imperative commands. Uh, we can build systems only from declarative statements in the indicative. Uh, you see, different verbs have different objects. We can obey an, an imperative, but we cannot believe an imperative. And, and, and uh, likewise, we cannot obey, we cannot obey an indicative. The sky is blue. Obey that sentence. Well, that doesn't make any sense. So when we put an imperative command as the object of faith, we have made a major irrational category error. We are mixing up the fields of epistemology and ethics. So now, does this mean that we have disregard for ethics? Does this mean that we hate God's law and have contempt for the Lord's authority? Are we, is, is Clark an antinomian, as some people try to charge him with? No, God forbid, no. Uh, we love the law. It means that, uh, it, it just means that an imperative command cannot logically be the object of faith. It's just, it's just irrational. The illogical error of putting an imperative as the object of believing is the heresy of legalism mixing up ethics and epistemology. And the irony of it all is that uh, legalism doesn't produce obedience. Only faith produces obedience. Believing things are true produces obedience. Legalism only produces hypocrisy. So uh, they're the true antinomians that do not love the law because what they're teaching does not produce obedience. Now, just as we must guard against the irrational error of mixing up epistemology and ethics, we must also guard against the irrational error of mixing up epistemology and metaphysics. This is the heresy known as modernism. It's swapping out truth as the object of faith, a declarative statement of truth, and trying to replace it with the reality of something. <clears throat> as Clark says, we cannot believe cat we can believe the cat is black, uh, but we cannot believe cat. We, we can, one can never believe X. One must believe X is Y. You wouldn't see on a true or false exam, cat, true or false. That doesn't make any sense. It's neither true nor false. You wouldn't say, <clears throat> my belief is cat. That is my belief. Again, that's irrational. And you cannot build a logical system from the reality of something, you know. Hamburger, therefore french fries. No, that's not logically valid. You see, a statement asserting truth is in the realm of thought and knowledge. You may eat and digest a hamburger when your stomach can get nutrients, but you can apprehend thought and knowledge only with the mind. And likewise, your mind cannot eat this hamburger. You know, um, um, this thing's good. Um. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So, you see, different organs 
are for different objects. Logically, certain verbs belong to certain objects. For example, it would be irrational to say, <clears throat> I'm hearing the color green. You know, the thing about this, this sentence, the syntax is fine, that, you know, the subject, verb, direct object, it's well formed. Gram grammatically, the object here is grammatically fine. But the, lo it's, but it, the logical object, see, keep in mind, we have to make sure as we go through this that we are, to, to distinguish this, that we're talking about the logical object of faith, not necessarily the grammatical object of the sentence. So, um, so but the logical object of this sentence is irrational. It doesn't make any sense. It's mixing up, uh, you know, the object of our, of our audible organ is sound. The object of our visible organ is light, you know, and the object of our digesting organ is a, is a hamburger. And, but the object of our mind believing is a thought, not the reality of something, you know, you know, not, not, you know, uh, so, uh, it's a, this is all irrational word games. It's all about mixing up sentences that put an object of faith that doesn't make any logical sense. So, uh, so now does this mean that Clark has disregard for metaphysics and reality? Is he a denier of reality? Is he denying that Jesus came in the flesh? Is he denying that real blood was spilt at Calvary? God forbid, no. This is not He's, he's not a solipsist, and he's not a Gnostic. No one is denying that the basis for faith is a real historical event. No, we're making this, the distinction that thought is the object of the mind, and God has chosen as the sole instrument of our justification, our mind-believing news. Now, if anyone thinks that knowledge can be disregarded, once we, experience, once we experience the present physical reality of Christ, you better think again. The Pharisees experienced Christ's physical presence. Judas Iscariot <clears throat> traveled with Jesus for three years. He broke bread with Christ. He greeted him with a kiss. Uh, Judas experienced... Jesus' physical presence, yet right now he's burning in hell. Why? Because Judas failed to believe truth about Jesus. He didn't believe the doctrine that Jesus taught about himself. So we need both a real cross and truth in our mind. You see, without the word, we cannot possibly understand and interpret even present reality as it truly is. Without the knowledge of the word in our mind, all of our views of reality will be grotesquely distorted. So, when we are talking about the definition of faith, <clears throat> we're talking about epistemology. We're talking about thought and knowledge apprehended by the mind, not some other object or uh, apprehended or perhaps digested by some other organ. You know, the reality of a thing belongs to an entirely different field of philosophy. As Clark says, you know, one can never believe cat, one must believe the cat is black. So this is the fundamental error of, of modernism. It is the irrational category error where they put as the object of faith the reality of something rather than a declarative statement. And in so doing, they also remove understanding, you see. They remove mental apprehension because the object of understanding necessarily is a thought. And we cannot say it enough through this series. Always be vigilant and watch out for the irrational buzzards that try to snatch understanding out of the definition of faith. So this is our introduction to modernism. It is the category error of mixing up what is true with what is real. 
And in the next video, we will unravel how modernism, modernists apply their irrational category error <clears throat> to twist and interpret and misinterpret scripture. And we'll see you then.